Right guys, listen up! Bit of a different one today. We all love video games, from family friendly, to violent and gory, to Garfield Kart. However, a lot of us, including myself, like to go back and play games that we spent countless hours into when we were younger. From something like Pokemon Fire Red, to Majora's Masks, to Spyro the Dragon, to Need for Speed Most Wanted. We love these games, and all the negative stuff about the game seems to be blocked out when we do play them. So that makes me think. Are these games that we played when we were younger actually good? Are they still good to this day? And are the following entries in the franchise good? Or is the bias in our mind tricking us? Before I get in, I understand that everyone has their own opinion, and that's totally fine. However, it is okay to like a game that isn't very good, or isn't very well received by a lot of people. But sometimes we have to recognize that if our brain is telling us one thing, but in reality, it's the total opposite. My first example would go to the original Tekken, an absolute masterpiece for the time and revolutionized 3D fighting as well as fighting games as a whole. By bringing in features such as each individual button on the controller or the arcade stick controlling each individual limb in game, this game showed what fighters could evolve into into the future. But if a person that isn't really accustomed to Tekken goes back and plays this game nowadays, they won't like it. Obviously, I'm not ignoring what this game did for the time, but compared to its two preceding games, Tekken 2 and Tekken 3, it doesn't stand a chance. If a person nowadays goes back and plays Tekken 3 for the first time, I reckon they'll like it a lot, but not Tekken 1. I like Tekken 1, but it's bad. It's slow, it's clunky, and it's flawed. And that's okay. Even if you grew up with Tekken 1, you should be able to see this game's flaws, and don't let the bias and nostalgia in your head block out what this game is. Also relating to Tekken is its story. It's fucking stupid. Actually, no. All fighting game stories are stupid. I like the Tekken story for how ridiculous, cheesy, and how over the top it is, but I'll still admit in the earlier durations of the franchise, it's awful. So this guy was like, me son's a load of piss buckets, so I'll throw him off a cliff. So years later, during a fighting tournament, he was like, yeah, my dad's a bit of a cock, so I'll throw him off that same cliff. And he survived. So during another fighting tournament, the dad was like, you what, mate? And threw him into a fucking volcano. It's fucking stupid. It's fucking dumb. It improved over time, but it's still stupid. But I love it. How about Crash Bandicoot? If you know me, I love my little orange marsupial. But fuck the first game's pretty bollocks. I would say the hardest game that I've ever played. No, I haven't played Dark Souls, fight me. But this game isn't hard on its own. Trying to complete this game 100% is the biggest nightmare you could ever face. One, you've got shitty clunky controls that are not in the slightest smooth and spinning after a jump makes you slide off into oblivion. Two, to 100% complete a level, break every single box and don't die once and you have to do that for the entire game. To save, either 100% complete a level or complete the bonus stage which you have one chance to do. If you don't get the chance to save, you'll be sent all the way back to your last save when getting a game over. 4. Try not to feel worried for this hog or whatever Crash plans to do with it. It's not hard to see that Crash Bandicoot 1 doesn't sit well today. Crash 2 and Crash Warped? Of course they do. What about the rest of the Crash series? And no, not spin-offs like CTR, Crash Bash, and Crash Tag Team Racing. The platformers. Crash Bandicoot 4, The Wrath of Cortex. It's fun, but wow, it's disappointing. Crash to Insanity was odd, but wasn't overall bad, but I didn't think it was that great. Like I said, you're allowed to like games that are not very well received, or people close to you think they're not good. And you're allowed to not like games that are well received, but we need to recognize if it's the nostalgia and the bias talking, or are these games good or bad? Then we have a very infamous franchise by now, Halo. Oh Halo, how I will always love you and hate you sometimes. I've said this before, Halo Combat Evolved does not hold up today. The AI is dumb, the characters are boring, the story is alright, but the gameplay is really clunky. The shooting seems off and the weapon variety isn't very expensive. Nowadays, this is such a whatever game. The multiplayer, don't get me wrong, was always fun and awesome, but the base game isn't very good anymore. For the time, I couldn't imagine how well this pushed the Xbox into the mainstream market, but I still love this game because I'm biased. My bias for Halo won't stop me for saying this though. Halo 2 is still good. While the controls are a bit slow and the character models not being great for the time, everything else is great. Weapon variety is vastly increased, enemies are vastly increased, and the characters actually care about this time. The story is great and tells a narrative about what the humans and the Covenant are going through. Doesn't excuse the cliffhanger though. And this being one of the first shooters to ever have online play just boosted this game beyond existence. It doesn't surprise me in the slightest that this was the most sold game on the original Xbox. I'll admit when a Halo game is bad, but Halo 2 is surprisingly great and I think it holds up extremely well today. But at the same time, 
Is it the bias and nostalgia talking? It's hard to tell, but I am open for debate. If you don't think that Halo 2 is that great and you don't think that it holds up very well today, let me know. I would love to see another perspective on that. These were just some of the games from my childhood that I will always love. They might not be amazing and they might not hold up today, but I still love them and will revisit them frequently. They don't have to be good. If a certain person likes a certain game even though it's not that good, it's fine. There is another game that a lot of people seem to hate but I like is Silent Hill Downpour. I don't think that game is as terrible as everyone thinks it is. Everyone shrugging off the bias after towards Silent Hill, I still think Downpour has potential. But I don't know. I never understood the hate towards Downpour. I thought it was alright. And even if it's the bias talking, I'm still allowed to like this game. People will disagree with me, I know that for a fact, but I still will like it. In conclusion, like whatever game you want to like, but try not to force your beliefs that you'll defend to to the grave to others. And the best thing to always do is to have an open mind, especially when playing the sequels to the games you love. In the comments below, tell me a game that you will always really love but isn't very well received. Or tell me a game that everyone does like but you really hate. Don't forget to subscribe with notifications turned on, smash that like button, and be a fucking maverick.